Hello everybody and what is up? So glad that you could join me today uh, here in physics, Fabs is physics, fun filled day. Okay, really doesn't start with an F, but hey, that's okay, neither does physics. That's perfectly alright. So, we are going to start and we're going to get in right with friction. So, what exactly is friction? Well, friction is a force. It's a force that always opposes motion. A force that opposes motion. Okay? Now, if it's opposing motion, it is always, 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 I cannot stress this, stress this enough, physics always operates in a direction that is opposite to the motion of the object. Operates in a direction that is opposite the movement of the object. Okay? So, sorry about that little glare there. Operates in a direction that is, there we go, opposite the movement of the object. Alright. Now, an important note to realize, think about this, if you have an object that is moving with a force applied and you have friction going backwards, it's important to realize that this frictional force can never Never, ever, ever, never be greater than the applied force. It just cannot happen. Okay, it's very important to understand that. If friction were greater than the applied force, that would mean this object, a car for example, would move backwards because friction was making it, was inducing motion backwards. Now, friction will slow motion, but it will not induce motion, okay? Friction will slow motion but it will not induce motion. So, uh, friction F of F can never exceed the applied force. Friction F of F can never ever exceed the applied force. All right, friction can never push hard enough to create motion. So friction can never create motion. It can never, ever, ever create motion. Okay. Now, there are two types of frictions that I want to talk about, believe it or not. Friction is not just friction in general. There's actually two types of friction. There is friction of movement and friction that is stationary, we'll say. So, two types of friction. Two types of friction. Okay. The first type of friction is called static. Now, when you hear the word static, you may think of still, stationary. They all start with S, and that is correct. Static is stationary. This type of friction opposes, continuing on, this type of friction opposes the initial motion, the initiation of motion. Opposes initiation of motion. Okay? Static friction opposes the initiation of motion. The other type of friction is the friction that we all know and love. It's the friction of movement. And when we talk about, think about energies, when you first learned about energy, you learned about potential energy, and you learned about kinetic energy. Very good. And this is kinetic friction. Kinetic friction. And this is friction of motion. And what this is, it opposes motion opposes uh, current motion. So basically what we have here is 
the static friction is the friction that locks an object into place. If you, if you put a ball on the ground, right? If you put a ball on the ground, and that ball, I'm looking for a ball around here, I guess I do not, do not have one, I apologize. But if we take, hmm, if we take this surface and we put a marker on it, that marker is, well, come on marker, don't move. That marker is not moving. The reason that marker is not moving is because there is some force that is keeping it bound to the surface. That force is the static friction. Now, once it starts to move, the reason it just doesn't shoot off is because there's still some friction in between the surface and the marker. As it moves, that's the kinetic friction, the friction of motion. But when it's stopped and just sitting there, that is the static friction that is keeping it there. All right. So, moving on. Which is greater? Which is greater? That's the question. So, in order to answer that question, I want you to think of an example. Let's say that you are pushing a pickup truck, right? Here's our pickup truck, right? There it is. It's a big pickup truck, got a little smokestack and everything, got some big wheels. All right, there we go. You're pushing that pickup truck. You're pushing it in this direction, force applied, and we know friction will act backwards. Now I want you to think about this. Is it harder? Is it more difficult to get that pickup truck rolling? Like to, to start the motion? Or is it more difficult to keep it rolling? Now let's assume we're on a flat surface. We're not going up, we're not going down. A nice flat surface. And you're just you're pushing it. So is it going to be more difficult to, to get it going, to get it budged, to get it start moving, or to keep it moving? What do you got? Three, two, one, zero? You are correct. It is actually more difficult to initiate the motion, to get it rolling. Okay? It is more difficult to start that motion than to keep it rolling. So what does this tell us? This tells us that, let me write this down, uh, more difficult to start motion than to keep truck moving. Okay, so what does this tell us? That to overcome the friction that is keeping it there, now is that static or kinetic? It's, it's keeping it there, it's not allowing it to move. Correct, that's static. So the force needed to overcome this static friction is greater than the force needed to keep it moving, to overcome the, the rolling friction. So this means, very important, that static friction is greater than kinetic friction. Static friction is greater than kinetic friction. Okay, It's always more difficult to get something moving than it is to keep it moving. Okay, very important. Always difficult to get something to start moving than it is to keep it moving. Okay. All right, we're doing excellent. Now, what would physics be without some equations? And this is where the math comes into play, everybody. We finally have some equations to throw on our physics equation board right over here. I know you all are so excited. So, so, so excited for this. Uh, so before we can learn those equations, we have to learn what friction actually depends on, and this is going to lead us into the equations. So friction depends on two things. Friction depends on two things in order to calculate it. Number one, it depends on the normal force. Fn. Now, I know you've seen this before. Remember, we always say, what is a force that everything has? It's gravity. And if it's touching a surface, it also has the normal force. I am standing on the ground right now. I have gravity pushing down on me. I have the normal force pushing back up on me. You are sitting in a chair right now. You have gravity pushing down on you. 
you have the normal force pushing up on you from the chair. So friction depends on the normal force. Okay. There's one other thing that friction depends on, and that is this. What is that, you ask? Excellent question. This is called the mu. It's mu. Mu. Ooh, sorry, you can't see that. There we go. It's called mu. Mu. All right. So what is mu? Well, mu is the coefficient of friction. It is unitless, meaning no units. So every time I say, hey, remember your units, meters per second, meters per second squared, newtons, kilograms, remember those, right? Here, you don't have any. You don't have to have any units. It is just a ratio. It's just a number. And there's one other important thing to remember. This should never be greater than one. Never ever greater than one. It cannot be greater than one. Okay. From these two things, normal force and mu, we can get our force of friction. Force of friction equals, ready? Mu times Fn. Nice and easy, right? Let's go right over to here. I'm going to put this guy right here, right? Force of friction equals mu times Fn. Straightforward, right there. Force of friction equals mu times, it's really hard doing this backwards, Fn. All right, awesome. So let's take a look at an example. Believe it or not, that's all we have for notes today, guys. Quick and easy. So I'm going to leave this equation right here. I'm going to erase these boards. And let's get right in to an example. Let's do some calculations. Now, the mu, the mu will, difference, uh, will differ depending on the surface. So another important fact. So if you have a surface like sandpaper, the mu will be higher. If you, uh, more, uh, it's rougher, there's more friction involved. If you have a surface like water, uh, excuse me, ice, mu will be less, mu will be smaller. The more frictionless your surface, the smaller the mu. The more friction um, your surface will apply, the greater the mu. All right, so let's see. Eduardo applies a 4.25 Newton force to a 0.765 kilogram book, accelerating it across a table. So here is our table. Here is the book. The book is 0.765 kilograms. Okay. Uh, he accelerates it across the table. He applies a force. F applied. Correct. And he, let's see, the coefficient between the book and the table is 0 0.410. So we're going to keep that in our back pocket, 0.410. We were told that the coefficient is 0 0.410. Determine the acceleration of the book. Let's get the rest of the forces drawn in there. F of G, F of N, F of F. Now, if you need to pause this, I want you to do so, but here is the question just in case you want to read through it. Ooh, autofocus. There we go. So if you need to pause that, by all means. And welcome back. So, we have our force diagram with our four forces. We have the mass. We know the mu that was given to us. Sometimes your mu will be given. Sometimes you'll have to solve for it. We have the force applied, the gravity, the normal, and the force of friction. We know that the force applied was 4.25 newtons. It was told to us in the problem. 4.25 newtons. We ultimately want to find the acceleration of the book. Okay. So we want to find what acceleration equals. 
we're going to be using Newton's second law. So this, I, I've stressed this before, but it really hasn't played too much of a role in our calculations, but today it will. From now on, I want you to start separating your x and your y variables with Newton's second law. So we're going to be doing the y variables. Sum of the forces equals ma. This is only, 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 only in the y direction. What are the two forces that are acting in the y direction? Correct. F of n and F of g. So we're going to sum those forces just like we've been doing. Up is positive, down is negative. F of n minus F of g equals ma. Now we need to think to ourselves a little bit here. Is the book floating? No, no, the book's not floating. Is the book going down through the table? No. Nope. So the book is just sitting there. So what in turn does that tell us about the values for f of g and f of n? Perfect. They are equal, 100%. Which means if these are equal, the acceleration of this book in the y axis it's not moving, which means that acceleration defaults to zero. So if this goes to zero, the whole side goes to zero, Fn minus Fg equals zero, which means, according to algebra, if we bring over the Fg, we get F of n equals F of g. And that is exactly what you just told me. These are balanced. These two forces are balanced. They have to be. For that book to stay stationary on the table, they have to be balanced. All right, perfect. The y is done. We're going to go back to this, but the y is done. Let's go to the x. Here we have two forces in our x direction, f applied and force of friction. Sum of the forces equal ma. Let's sum these two forces. I'm going to say this way is positive, this way is negative. f applied minus force of friction. F applied minus force of friction equals MA. All right. We ultimately want to find an acceleration, so we can't cross anything out just yet. So let's see, can we break this equation down any further with anything that we've just learned? Huh? Huh? Yes, we can. So we're going to take the F of F over there. Oops, we're going to take the F of F over, over there. And we're going to break that down one step further using this equation. Force applied equals, oh, sorry, force applied minus, now let's plug in what our f of f is, mu times f of n equals ma. And now, guys, we could just simply go in and substitute our values. We know that the force applied was 4.25, it told us right in the paper. We know the mu that was given to us is 0 0.410. Now, do we have an F of n? It wasn't given to us, they didn't come out directly and say it, but think about it, do we have an F of n? We know what F of n equals. F of n has to equal F of g. We figured that out, and we know how to calculate f of g. We know f of g equals m times g. f of n equals f of g, which really equals m times g, which is the mass, 0 0.765, times gravity, 9.8. All right, so we do that out, and we get 7. 0.497 newtons, which is our f of g, but also our f of n because they are both equal. That can then be plugged right into there. 7.497 equals, we have our mass, 0 0.765. 0 0.765, and we multiply by a. Oops, got a wicked glare over there. Sorry, guys. So doing all of this math out, that gives us an acceleration. We're going to multiply these two together first. This minus the product, and then we divide over. We get an acceleration of zero. Oops, sorry. 
we get an acceleration of 1.54 meters per second squared. All right, everybody. So, not too bad. All right. So, uh, let's see. Now, in some cases, you will also be asked to find the mu. Again, you're going to go through the same equation, and you're going to work through that. So, I hope that this has helped you guys um, in calculating this, and I uh, would like you guys to go through your homework and do the same exact thing. All right? So, everybody, good luck. Please let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day. Mr. F. Sane. See ya.